more successful. All right, let's talk about the next one up. Applied flat shapes. This would be highly successful. This would be a B. Okay, so I've got some soft clay. I'm gonna do an applied flat two-dimensional shape. Once again, I have my um, pencils as governors. I can put a piece of fabric flatly over my clay, roll it, okay? When I do this, this fabric is actually pulling moisture out of that clay. It's drying it, which is good for what we're doing. All right, now I can pull it up and I can even roll it a little bit thinner. The reason, I, now it's not sticking to my rolling pin because the fabric took some of the moisture out. I can even roll it thinner if I want. Oh, still sticking, ha ha ha, should have done that. I can flip it over to another flat spot on the fabric. Each time I flip it onto a dry part of the fabric, it's actually drying the clay out. All right, so here I have my clay, sh my clay flat shape. You can see the clay is plastic. It's really thin. It would never stand up on its own, not even close to being as thin as my pinky. So if I had this stand up on its own, it would break for sure. All right, but I'm gonna lay it on, on the other clay really flat. It's gonna be what is called an applied flat shape. So here I'm gonna lay this guy down, gently roll, okay. Using my needle tool or my toothpick, I'm gonna to draw, or I'm going to cut out, the shape of a hot air balloon. Cutting that out. Cut the little basket out. Okay. Pull this off. Whee! All right. Okay. Now I've got these flat shapes. They're not 3D, they're not forms. They're called shapes. So what I'll do is I'll take it to my clay. I will lightly trace with my needle tool or toothpick. I'm lightly tracing where I'm gonna need to do the slipping and scoring. Here I go, scoring. Back side of the balloon. Scoring. Little basket. Scoring. Okay, grab a little slip. Fill all the possible air holes. Little basket, filling. Pop that down. Back side of the balloon slip, okay, put that there, good. Now I have an applied two-dimensional sh flat shape, okay, but I have ragged edges and they don't look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to moisten my finger and come around and take some time. If you have an old paintbrush sitting around, you can also come in here and clean up your, your little edges. Finger, paintbrush. If you have an old sponge, you can also twist it into a tiny, tiny edge. And you could also come along here and clean that edge up nicely, okay? And now we have what we call an applied flat shape. Take your time, really do a good job, you know? Craftsmanship counts, these are the arts, right? So, you know, it just, why not, if you have the choice between making something that's okay and something that's really good, make something really good. All right, there we go, We've got an applied flat shape. So I could apply the baffles that go into a, inside of a hot air balloon. So I'm gonna even slip on, score on top of that. Some details. I could continue to build detail on top of the balloon. Okay, I could put these on. Okay, the more detailed, the better. 
your craftsmanship grades will be, and the more successful your project's going to be, let's face it. Okay, so I'm starting to get a two-dimensional shape that's interesting. I can keep adding more details on it, and uh, this would be Applied Flat Shapes, Highly Successful B. So I can draw in here. Don't make it scabby and nasty. Lay your needle down flat on the surface, flat. Notice I'm having to change the position of my needle all the time. There you go, highly successful. Applied flat shapes. Now we're gonna to go to the one that's outstanding. We're gonna actually make a form pop out of here. So I'm gonna make a hot air balloon. Now you guys remember pinch pots, right? Okay, so we're gonna actually make a form, okay? Now lots of people would just take thick clay and they would just form it into a balloon. Okay, there we go. Under a little balloon. And they would stick it right on there, okay? They would slip it and score it on here and they would call that great. But let me tell you, it's not great. It's bad. The reason it's bad is because this is thick clay. It's way thicker than my pinky and it's highly likely to stay wet inside when it dries. It goes into the kiln and explodes because the moisture is trapped in there. It's also highly likely to have an air bubble in there. So it's gonna dry at an improper rate due to being so thick. And it's also highly likely to have an air bubble inside. So don't do it like that, okay? That's bad. If I get a project and it's thick clay and I suspect it's not hollow, I won't fire it. The reason is it'll blow up everybody else's projects too and that's not cool. So I'm gonna take my little bit of clay and I'm gonna do the world's tiniest pinch pot, okay? Whee, there we go. You guys already know how to do this. You're experts at this. Okay, a little pinch pot. Okay, maybe you need a dab of water. That's okay. Okay, so I've got my little balloon part. Maybe I can just pull it into a little balloon, hot air balloon shape. Okay, good. Take your time. Okay. Good, maybe tap the bottom to get it nice and sharp. Okay, got my little balloon, cool. All right, now, notice the inside's hollow. It's about pinky thick. It's gonna dry at the even rate, very important. All right, I'm gonna lay it here. I'm gonna trace around it so I know where to, where to score. Now I know where to score. Okay, and I'm also going to have to score this back edge. Okay, good. Now you know what's coming. I'm going to grab some slip. I'm 
Make sure to fill all those gaps. Always. Good. Okay. Clean it up with your fingers. I'm going to go over here, throw some slip in here. Okay. Make sure all those air bubbles are full and just pop that guy on there. Now, I have a way more successful hot air balloon. And I could also, if I so desire, I have these cool baffles right here. I could apply flat baffles here like this here if I want to. Okay. So I have a problem. So I have a really cool hot air balloon here. It's coming along. I still need to put the basket on. That's fine. This is way more successful because it's 3D. Way more interesting. A little paintbrush. I could also use a teeny tiny bit of sponge. Clean up those edges. Okay. Make them look good. Go around, tidy that up. Okay. You can use a Q-tip, fingers, you name it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I got a problem now. I have air inside of this and it's sealed. So if you ever apply something onto something else and you've now created an air bubble that is sealed inside of there with no ventilation, this thing is gonna explode in the kiln because the hot air is gonna to get to 2000 degrees and it's gonna to need to escape somewhere because hot air has high pressure and it wants to escape. I've gotta give it a place to escape. So what I would probably do is go on the back side of my project where the air balloon, where the back of that balloon is and I would put a tiny hole. Okay, just a tiny hole. That's gonna actually, this little hole is gonna let that 2000 degree air come out, okay? Now, I want you to ask yourself, sometimes I get students who are really worried, and so they just gouge huge holes in their projects. Take a look at this hole. How big is it? It's just tiny. It's tiny, okay? Very small. That's all you need, okay? So, let me detail this out a little more. I can roll these little baffles with my fingers. There we go. And maybe I just want to grab my little rolling pin now. Roll them flat. Hooray. Good. Slip and score, fill up all those gaps, very important. Okay. Dip a little water in your fingers, help smooth it. Spend some time, make it good. Next time, I, next I would be doing the little basket down here, but I'm not gonna do it right now, because, and I'm not gonna make you guys do it either, because I think you get the point. Okay, okay. So this is three-dimensional, okay? This is an applied form, 
Okay, remember, a form is 3D. This is considered a form. This is good, yes. This is a shape. This is flat. It's just okay. This is really good. I've got my air hole. Okay. Applied 3D forms, outstanding, A+. Plus. So, on the bottom here, for outstanding, you can inscribe, if you wish, an O, or you could find something that looks like an O and press it in there. Notice I'm laying my needle down, guys. I'm not making ugly, nasty burrs. Outstanding. This is our visual rubric. How do you know if you're going to get an NYS on your decorations? If they look like this, you're going to get an NYS. If they look like this, you're going to get an S, successful. If they look like this, you're going to get a highly successful. And if they look like this, you're going to get an outstanding. Okay, that's how you know how your decorations are. Notice some are 3D, some are 2D. All right. And that's our standard for um, decorating in slab.